At the start of the episode, Smith catches Joe in his office with the empty grasshopper file. He tells Joe that although he knew that Joe was lying to him, he had hoped that he was wrong. Holding up a sketch of Juliana, he demands that Joe tells him who she is. Joe tells most of the truth but certainly holds something back. Smith realizes Joe clearly has feelings for Juliana. Therefore, Joe tried to protect her identity. The scene ends with a terrified Joe asking where Smith will take him. Following this, we are taken to San Francisco, where Juliana reads a note from the Japanese Authority building. The note seems to refer to perhaps a new film that Juliana may need to deliver as a part of the resistance machine. Soon, Frank walks into the room. The couple apologizes to each other as they discuss Laura's death. Frank explains to Juliana his plan to assassinate the crown prince. He says he felt it was the only thing necessary after seeing so much death. However, he gets emotional and admits that he couldn't do it. He also mentions that the little Japanese boy made him rethink and stop himself. The following day, Juliana wakes up to a phone call from Arnold, her stepfather, asking her to come by and take care of her mother. Juliana reveals to Frank that Arnold is working with the Japanese. Hearing this, Frank cautions Juliana to be very careful at work. Back in Smith's office, Joe talks about helping cover for Juliana when she killed a Nazi agent. Smith reminds Joe that Juliana is an enemy of the state. So John offers Joe an opportunity to redeem himself. Joe needs to utilize his budding romance with Juliana to gather more information on the films from the resistance. If he doesn't do the work as required, Smith threatens to kill them both. Reluctantly, Joe agrees and makes a phone call to Juliana's house. Frank gets the call and gives it to Juliana, who tells Joe that she can't talk on the phone but will call him later. After a stiff phone call, Juliana assures him that nothing happened between the two in the neutral zone. Later, Juliana visits her mother, who mentions that she felt Trudy was dead. However, she says brightly that the feeling is gone, and she feels much better. Juliana, facing away from her mother, sheds tears as she knows that her sister is dead but fails to tell her mother. Back in New York, Joe arrives at an apartment to meet a young boy and his mother, Rita, who is probably Joe's girlfriend. Although she worries about Joe, he assures her nothing is wrong but he needs full cooperation from both of them for one more mission. In the next scene, Julia is at a marketplace. She seemingly catches a glimpse of a woman who looks like her sister, Trudy. However, the woman vanishes amongst the crowd. Meanwhile, Tagomi meditates in front of a picture of a woman and a young man. He cries before walking out, resuming his composure. Upon arrival at work, he chats with Inspector Kaido about Juliana's employment. Kaido informs him that Juliana is the sister of a known subversive, referring to Trudy. Tagomi thanks him for this information, and later, during a conversation with Juliana, he confronts her. Juliana apologizes and tells him that she will resign from her position. Tagomi, however, assures her that she is fine despite the ongoing investigation into her life. Tagomi then reflects on his time with his departed wife and son before he sends Juliana for her duty. He then orders his assistant to find out about Trudy's exact whereabouts. The police are invading the gun factory in Frank's workplace. Ed tells him to leave immediately, and Sergeant Yoshida and Inspector Kaido watch as he leaves the place. On the other hand, when Arnold sees her, Juliana passes on paperwork from the trade minister. He quietly asks her what she's doing there, and says that they should meet at the diner later. After he flees from the factory, Frank goes to meet Mark Sampson to talk about his Jewish beliefs. He reminds Frank to find faith in beauty to find hope to live. As planned, Juliana and Arnold meet at a restaurant. Arnold explains his reason for working for the Japanese. He says that he knows everything about Trudy. Arnold tells her how he took this job to work with the Japanese 16 years ago to support the family. Also, he believes he's kept Trudy safe, that the Japanese agreed to send her to the neutral zone. Arnold seems to be under the belief that Trudy and her boyfriend had escaped to the neutral zone, which is not true. In New York, Joe receives a phone call from Juliana as she apologizes for not saying goodbye before leaving. Joe tries to extract information from her about the films from the resistance. She mentions that the new film is different from the other two. A man listens into their conversation, having been assigned by Smith to do so. Juliana does not elaborate because she knows that the Japanese have all the phone lines tapped at the moment. Their conversation is cut off, and Juliana is about to put in more coins before noticing a man waiting in line for the phone. So, she drops the phone. Smith then reviews the tape with Joe's conversation to discover what Juliana knows. He demands that he report to him daily about people he meets, and their discussions with them. Smith decides to send Joe on a mission to find Juliana. 
and to try to reach her contact. In the meantime, Frank returns to the antique store where he bought the bullets and tries to strike a deal to make cheap antiques and then sell them as genuine. Childen, the store owner, rejects the offer, but he proposes that Frank craft an antique for a customer. Childen then reveals that his craft is a game where he creates duplicates to pawn off the Japanese customers. When Frank asks whether or not he will be able to identify the cheap antiques as fake, Childen tells him that Frank already has a phony pistol in his possession, but he doesn't know it. They strike up a deal to split between them 80,000 yen 60 to 40. Back home, Juliana tells Frank that Arnold was working with the Japanese to save them. She also mentions that she had seen Trudy at the marketplace. Upon hearing this, Frank is quite doubtful and instead suggests Juliana run away with him as the Kempete is after him. Juliana agrees but the next day seeks the truth behind Trudy's death. Tagomi later thanks Juliana for her compassion regarding the loss of his wife, and in return, he tells her that Trudy is dead. He gives Juliana the location of the body and a flower but warns her about the brutality of the site. Juliana then travels to the burial site. She covers her nose due to the intense smell and makes her way to where the flies are most buzzing. As she comes across a dug up area, she finds her sister's body among the masses of other bodies. Meanwhile, Joe has arrived from the airport. He is about to get into a cab when someone angrily pushes him back of the line. Joe is then following the back of a grieving Juliana. In the next scene, Lem Washington, owner of the Sunrise Diner in Cannon City and a senior member of the Resistance, teaches a young boy how to fish. Meanwhile, a Resistance fighter delivers a coded message to Lem about a new mission in San Francisco. Juliana tells Arnold and her mother that the Kempeitai killed Trudy because she got caught up with the Resistance. Juliana's mother refuses to accept this, arguing that she can feel Trudy's presence in the world. Arnold realizes that he is the reason for Trudy's death because he provided the information to the police regarding her whereabouts. Ed makes his way to Juliana and Frank's place, where Frank is making a replica of the Native American antique is asked by Childen. Ed reports to Frank that the Kempeitai is at the factory, and they believe that the gun used to shoot the crown prince was made at the factory. Therefore, Frank tells Ed that he and Juliana will leave that night to avoid arrest. Ed then buys the bus tickets for Frank and Juliana as he tries to help his close friends one last time. When Juliana is about to pay for a meal at the market, Joe surprises her when he covers the bill. Joe asks her for information on the new film and to help him contact the resistance fighters. Meanwhile, Frank goes to the antique store to give his forged piece to Childen. However, Childen tells him he no longer wants to sell a replica because it could mean a summary execution for both of them. Only when Frank threatens him, Childen agrees to try and get the antique sold. Juliana looks for Karen, a resistance contact at a flower shop and informs her of the job she acquired at the Japanese Nippon building. She asks about the film for Joe, but Karen immediately voices her suspicions and tells her that she cannot help Juliana or him. Sometimes later, Karen and Lem meet up at a deserted location to find the film after their contact asks for 10,000 yen. However, the fighters find their contact dead on the bench, with the film nowhere in sight. Calling the nearby phone booth, a man, who turns out to be a member of Yakuza, a powerful Japanese criminal organization, asks the resistance fighters for 100,000 yen in exchange for the film. The show cuts to a suspicious club where Kaido and Sergeant Yashida meet with the club owner Teishi Akamura, who is also a part of the Yakuza. Akamura informs Sergeant Yashida and Chief Inspector Kaido that a new film produced by the man in the High Castle has surfaced for which he offers a bribe of 150,000 yen. However, Kaido retorts that his men are incorruptible and do not fear the Yakuza. In the next scene, Smith and his son are at the hospital, where the doctor tells him that his son has a severe disease called Landuzi Dejerian syndrome, a classic congenital disorder. It would lead his son to paralysis in a matter of months. Smith asks about treatment, to which the doctor responds that there is no treatment though they could investigate further. The situation places Smith in quite a bind as the Nazis execute the handicap because they cannot contribute to society. Realizing this, the doctor instructs Smith on how to perform euthanasia for his son. Meanwhile, Juliana returns to the flower shop to meet with Lem and Karen. They ask her to set up a meeting with Joe Blake. Juliana brings Karen and Lem to Joe instead, so they can directly ask him to get the 100,000 yen to pay the Yakuza, a task to which Joe agrees. In the New York office, Oberst Gruppenfuhrer Heydrich, a legendary Nazi, visits Smith and a tense conversation follows. Heydrich says he wants to take Rudolf Wegener as his prisoner in Germany. Smith then goes to meet Wegener to talk about his true mission. Smith reveals that he has intentionally not tortured Wegener because of their old friendship 
but Wegener reveals that he is prepared to die for the cause. Childen takes the fake antique to his clients, the Kassauras. They're fooled when his clients see the antique, paired with photographic evidence. After the con is completed, Frank gets his share of the money, which he hopes to utilize while getting out of town with Juliana. At the Smith household, Helen asks her husband about the appointment at the hospital that morning. John reassures her and lies about their son's diagnosis. In the meantime, Joe calls Smith regarding the deal with the Yakuza. Smith grants Joe the funds as long as Joe honors the bargain he made with Smith previously. Juliana rushes home before quietly whispering to Frank about the policeman standing outside. Frank tells her that she shouldn't say goodbye to her mother, considering that Arnold works for the Japanese. Juliana hesitates, worried that her mother has just lost a daughter so to lose another would devastate her. So, they decide to visit them but do not say anything about their plans. At her mother's place, Juliana's mother comments on how Juliana hasn't eaten a thing. Juliana apologizes, stating that she isn't hungry. Alone in the kitchen, Arnold approaches her and tells her that although he doesn't know how mixed up in this, she is. Tonight she has to stay away. Juliana immediately asks why, to which Arnold responds that he picked up some phone chatter. The Yakuza are planning on selling the film tonight and the Kempeitai will be there too. They are planning on acquiring the film and killing the operatives from the resistance. After hearing this, Juliana rushes off, telling Frank that she left something at work and promising him that she will meet Frank at the bus. Joe walks through the Yakuza nightclub where he is due to receive the film as Karen and Lem wait outside. The group has indeed been trapped in an ambush. Joe hands in a ticket to a coat check girl and gets handed a coat where the film is supposed to be. However, Chief Inspector Kaido, and Sergeant Yakuta patiently wait outside, ready to strike at the right moment. Seconds later, Juliana enters the building to warn Joe just as dozens of Kempeitai speed up to the scene. As Juliana and Joe frantically escape through a back door, the alleyway is blocked by a black car. White men with guns get out of the car and throw the two inside the car at gunpoint. Just as the car drives off, Chief Inspector Kaido bursts through the back door with the Kempeitai and misses his targets. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel grow. Thanks for watching.